Welcome back to Rational Expressions. In this particular video, we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Okay, so there's a three-step process for multiplying rational expressions. The first is factor. Okay, so if you can factor, it's essentially reducing and, and getting it to look a little bit easier for you. Okay, so if we're looking at this problem example, okay, it doesn't look like we can factor much, but we can, okay? So we have 7 over, and we can actually factor 10 to its prime factors, which is 5 and 2, okay? And we're going to multiply this by 5. There are no other prime factors of 5. And really, we could write 3 times 3, but the reason why I'm not writing 3 times 3 is because there's no other 3s in this problem for it to cancel out with. The whole goal is to get prime factors to cancel out with each other, okay? So if we can see that some of the prime factors will cancel out, with either the top or bottom, then we're going to go ahead and try to get it into that factored form so we can reduce, okay? So here we recognize that we have a 5 and a 5, and we can cancel that. And so we are left with 7 over 18, and that's the most simplified form, okay? Now, if you were to go the other way, the long route, and just multiply 35 over 90, okay? You can see that you can divide both of these by 5 after you're done. Notice how 5 was the number that we canceled. So by first factoring, you can reduce your workload and make it a little bit easier for you to arrive at your answers. 7 over 18. Okay? You get the same thing, but it's just a little bit quicker process. Okay? If you can reduce after factoring, okay, which we kind of did, there was nothing really to reduce, then you just multiply straight across and you're done, okay? So I kind of zoomed through the first three steps, but that is the general process, okay? Here's a little tougher example, okay? So we're asked to multiply 5p minus 5 over p times 3p squared over 10p minus 10, okay? These two terms, there's really nothing to factor there, but anytime you have addition or subtraction in binomials, there's generally something that you can factor out. So we're going to start by factoring these and showing, seeing what we get. So we can factor out a 5 because they both have a common coefficient of 5. And we get p minus 1 in the top. p, we already said we can't factor, times 3p squared over. We see that there's 10 here, 10 here, so we're going to factor out a 10. Okay, and we're left with p minus 1 in the bottom. The whole point of doing this was see if we have common factors in the top and bottom. When separated by just multiplication, we can cancel them. So we're canceling the p minus 1. Okay. And technically, we could have reduced this 10 to be what? 10 can be broken down to its prime factors, which is 5 times 2, which we can cancel the 5s. Now, if you're good, let me show you a different way to do this. If you're good with just canceling out the 5 and the 10 and putting the 2 in the bottom and the 1 in the top, Okay, then you can go ahead and do that. I'm just showing the way you can do that using prime factors. Okay, now over here, um, we're going to write 3p squared over 2p. Okay, again, if you're good with canceling and seeing that you can cancel the p squared with a p, leaving just the p in the top, that's fine. Otherwise, that's what this whole reduce step is. Okay, you can do that at the end after you multiply also, okay? You can do it either before or after. It just kind of saves you work when you do it before, all right? So here we recognize that we can cancel the p squared with one of the p's in the bottom, and we're left with 3p in the top over 2, and that's 